All right, as soon as I start mentioning final exam, final exam, it starts getting really quiet in here. Final exam. Okay, there we go. It works. It works. Those are the magic words. Here's what's going to be on the final exam. All right, so I am recording this. It is on uh, video, but it's really an audio recording. There's not going to be any video to this, but it will be on YouTube on my video recording. However, this is the audio feed of everything you ever wanted to know about the final exam. All right, so the final exam, now it's really quiet, is going to be next week, next Monday, the 16th of December, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It will probably take you about two hours. What? Yeah. It's probably going to take about two hours. I'm going to tell you what's on it and why I think it's going to take that long, but we'll just see. I'm getting there. Part of it is multiple choice. Okay, and how many questions? I'm getting there. Just give me a break. <laughs> All right. So if you don't want to take it on Monday, you have the option of taking it on Wednesday. On Monday, it's offered at 2 o'clock. On Wednesday, I have a data structures online course, and I'm allowing people to show up to that time frame if they want. That time frame is from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., so if you don't like Mondays, you have another exam on Monday, you want to show up Wednesday, you don't have anything better to do on your Wednesday afternoon, you only have to show up one time to take this thing. You can show up at 11 o'clock. I, if I were you, I would actually show up at 11. Don't show up at 2.50. The time period is over at 3. So don't show up at a quarter to 3 or 2 o'clock or something. Like that. You're not going to have enough time. This exam is going to take you about two hours is what I'm trying to tell you. So give yourself a two-hour time frame. All right, what is on this thing that's going to take two hours? To answer your questions, it is 25 multiple choice questions plus 15 points of short answer. And you're going, what? You didn't say anything about the short answer. The entire exam is worth 40 points or 40% of your grade. The assignments are worth 60%. So it's a little, that's almost a 50-50, but it's a 60-40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the technical term. So 25 and 15. So 25 is multiple choice. Some people don't like multiple choice. I thought multiple choice would be easier. Of the 15, you, ask, you have to answer three questions of five options. So I give you five questions. You pick three of them. You answer three of them for 15 points, five points each. You can get multiples of one through five on the questions. Let me go through the multiple choice first, or do you want me to go through the questions, the five questions first? Questions. You want me to go through the questions first, okay. The questions do not require source code writing. They do not require um, diagrams or pictures or anything like that either. You are to provide, I'm, I'm reading you the instructions here, for each question is worth five points, answer three of five, provide a minimum of 200 words per each response. You do not need to provide source code or fully running programs. You want to do a minimum of about 200 words per each one of these questions. It's like half a page. <laughs> a couple paragraphs. Which means I'm not, like, this is why I say it's going to take two hours to do the exam. It's going to take an hour to do the multiple choice and probably about an hour to do the short answer. So don't come here thinking you're going to do the exam in an hour. It's probably not going to work. So normally the class starts at 2 o'clock. We'll probably go till 4, 4.30-ish is what I'm thinking. So, which is normal for us. And it's about a two-hour exam. Not a hard exam. Just, I'm going to say it's, it's time-consuming because of the second part. So 200 words, you don't have to count your words, but it's a couple paragraphs. I want more than a sentence or two. The topics are, everything in the exam is Android application development. <laughs> I was like, I'm right now. The topics for the essay questions. There's five questions, you pick three. And I see a typo already. Hold on one second. This is my opportunity to fix typos. This is a bad sentence. <laughs> okay. The 
the first question is on the Android system itself, it's on the development environment. It's a question related to the parts of the Android program, how the Eclipse works with it. Uh, long story short, let me just bring up Eclipse right now, actually. Let me tell you what it could possibly be related to. I can't tell you the question. I'm just telling you the topic area. If you've ever built an Android project, you know you'll be able to answer these questions. No problem at all. Hopefully you made six programs in Android. So you can, you're going to be able to answer these questions. But oh, here's Patchy from last week, actually. Double click on Patchy. Oops. Um, open project. What could you possibly know about the source code direct? Well, we have an, a directory called SRC that holds the source code. We have the resource folder that holds all the resources in it, you know, like the pictures and the icons and stuff like that. We have a separate section here for menus. We have one called layouts in the resource folder here, layouts. They give us our XML layouts. We have menus. Context menu, or excuse me, options menus. We got strings in here. Strings .xml file is in the value subfolder. The question is related to describing parts of this. If you've never seen this before, you're not going to be able to answer that question. <laughs> so I stuck these five questions in at the end for a couple reasons. For, first reason was you know, the exam is worth 40 points, so I have to make it a little bit more substantial than multiple choice questions. But the real reason was I want to see what you know, not what you don't know. The multiple choice is going to tell me what you don't know. The, these questions here, 15% of it or so, is going to tell me what you do know. So if I said something about describing this as an example, it's not the question. But if I said describe the IDE environment, then some of you are, are probably going to be able to tell me, hopefully, about some of the sections that are in here. And about some sort of, that's too broad of a question. I'm going to say something else. Uh, and don't forget, we also have like things like the manifest down here, Android manifest and stuff like that. Um, but the question is going to get at: Have you? From, are you familiar with this? And if so, what are you going to be? What can you respond with? There's many different ways of doing it. So it works <coughs> in everybody's favor. If you don't know a term for something, you don't have to use it. It's not going to be like fill in the blank. What term does this? You know, I mean, outside of certain things like manifest, that's kind of a no-brainer, or XML, <laughs> that's kind of, can't get, get, can't get past that. But long story short, it's, um, essay is easier because then you can tell me what you know, which is the purpose of it. All right, so the first question, and you, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to, but it's on this, it's on the IDE, it's on the development environment. Okay, set question number two, and stop me as I go through this. You can say, hey, is that on the exam, or is that over there on the exam, something like that. Wow. Question number two is on the content, 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 the concept of intents. Remember that little word intent, I-N, let me just read it from the page, I-N-T-E-N-T, -E <laughs> intents. The whole question is about intents. You don't know anything about intents. Not necessarily going to be able to answer the question. So st look at and take a look at. If you look at this, and I pulled these guys out because these things I think would actually help you. In today's lecture, I'm going to go over this one here called threads. But there's ones called widgets, and there's one called AP intents. There's like a whole three of them: intents one, intents two, intents three. They're PDF files that go along with um, source code examples. So if I take a look in the Android folder. I want to go into the supplemental notes folder. And in, uh, oh, not in here, wait a minute. Content provider, let's see. Uh, wait a minute. Let me scroll into the other one. Hold on a second. I thought it was in this one. Uh, oops, hello. Internet's not going to work. There we go. Uh, let's see. Tutorials. Here we go. Where am I? I am in. Here we go. Intense one. Intense tutorial, we did this one in class. We went over these in class. Uh, this was intent number two, intent number three. This is where you're going to find the intent information. 
We don't have a textbook for this course. Instead, the question is going to be related to something we did when programming intents. We did intents with Hello World, by the way, just in case you need a familiar, you need a check up on the intent concept. <coughs> it's when one activity called another activity. Intents are also used to call content providers. Intents are used to go Google intents. Find out what they're used for, how they're used. You don't have to write any source code that uses an intent. If you want to, you can. If you find that you have a better understanding of source code by writing source code, you're more than welcome to. I'm just saying you don't have to. It's not required. You don't have to write any Android source code or Java source code, actually. But some people think in code. They don't think in words. So it doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. But that's a question about intents. Also add the concept of intent filter to that. That's what you get in the manifest, actually. Intents and intent filters. And I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you the topic areas. I can't give you the questions. The questions will be on something related to intents and intent filters. If you know about the concept, it's an easy question. Actually, if you've written, if you wrote your six Android projects and you did them yourself, you can pass this exam, no problem. It's not that hard. It's for those people who cheap borrow and steal and, you know, they didn't really didn't do their own work. They're going to have problems, probably. All right, number three. Uh, number three is on GUI development. Um, I see another typo. Good thing I'm reading this thing. It's very similar to number one. GUI. Uh, let's see. We got widgets that are part of GUI. We have, oops, let me get back into Android here. I don't want to give it completely away. I'm just putting notes so I can leave more space, actually. What I'm going to end up doing, instead of printing this out so you write in between, we'll just give you some blank paper. You can stick it in there. Because uh, some people will be a little bit more wordy than other people. Um, it's on the GUI component of it, the UI. Okay, I'm, I'm trying not to give you too many... Too many things. Well, what can I ask you about the GUI? <laughs> let's just do it this way. Uh, so let's open up the resource here. I'll take a, take a look here. What do we got here? We got the we got the layout. What do we got in the layouts? We got different kinds of layouts. Remember, we had an entire lecture on layouts, relative layout, grid view. We did some in class actually. Grid grid view layout, a tab or I don't know, whatever linear layouts. I'm not going to go through all the layouts. Here's a table view, table layout. It's not rote memory where you have to figure out, you know, I'm not going to ask you to name five layouts or something like that. So all the questions can be answered in several different ways, depending upon what you know about the GUI part of it. So we have, like, the concept of a layout. Then we have these XML codes with these subparts, and the subparts are given IDs, and the IDs are in r.java. You know, how a concept of r.java that's in there resource file and how the icons or, or the, the images are drawable. The question is about, do you know how to make a GUI? <laughs> Describe it, it. I don't want to read the question. But let me just take a look here. I just want to make sure I'm not leading you astray on this. It's, it's definitely focused on GUI development. GUI development using resources, how's that? <laughs> Okay, uh, questions on number three. Number three is actually, it's not the same. You see, number one <coughs> is on the entire project format. It goes above and beyond, like, uh, GUI components of it. Number three is more towards the development of the windows and the interfaces and the, the usability, events. So there's also the concept of events as well. It's um, okay. So each one of these questions, and let me let me go to number three here. Number three's got the one I've been talking about. One, two, three, four. The 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 question itself has four questions in it, four sentences. So it's not describe the GUI in Android. It's 
discuss, I'm reading the question actually, discuss how blah 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 works with blah 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 in the Android platform. Show an example of how blah 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 works with blah blah blah. That's the second one. Simply discuss the concept of blah 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 working with blah blah blah. It's specific, but it's about the GUI components. And there's four questions in there. Well, it's one question, but there's four subparts or three subparts to it. What's the same concept? About the same concept. <laughs> but it's a detailed concept ish. You probably already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, if you're smart, you already know what I'm talking about. And if you're not, ask your neighbor. <laughs> so there's number three. <laughs> there are number four. I'm like, what did you just say? All right, number, do we have questions about number three, by the way? You don't have to answer number three if you don't like number three. You look at that and go, what? I don't like that. I actually, I'm going to change the wording of one of the sentences because that's not going to be the, that's not going to be the exact because I, it doesn't make sense the way that it's read. It, it, I need to clarify that one a little bit. I might actually add another sentence to it or something, but anyway. Number three is on GUI. Number four. Number four is all about the activity life cycle. There was a lecture with a big old diagram on it that showed all the different stages of the life cycle and how they go from the different ones. You know, we have on create, on pause. It's um, not a question that says describe the life cycle. That would be too easy. But you should be able to describe the life cycle. Instead, it's going to be on a characteristics of the life cycle. How many questions do we have in this? We have one, two, three, four, five sub-questions on this one. Just because there's five and not three or four doesn't mean it's not easy. It's asking about a couple of the different stages of the life cycle. If you don't know something, you don't have to mention it. If you do know something, you can mention it. That's why I say it's the type of exam where you're demonstrating what you know, not necessarily what you don't know. Because I'm looking at this question going, yeah, I can answer it from a couple different perspectives depending upon how technical I want to get. Especially if you think about the concept, and I'm going to give you a key word here about saved instance states. You're going to have a difficulty if you don't understand that concept coming up with an example of something. <laughs> if you don't know what saved instance states are and how that works with the life cycle. We see it from on create all the way through the end of the life cycle model. The, excuse me, the app life cycle. So long story short, that's kind of, because a lot of people at this point start asking me, well, what level of detail? Because I said, you, you said it doesn't have to write any source code. Well. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's bring up main activity. I was going to bring up main activity. There are no questions about Java programming. So naturally, here's that saved instance state from bundle that comes in through on create, and then we have on destroy, and uh, well, that's all we have. We don't actually. There's a better example out here. It's called life cycle. Let me make sure, I'm quoting this correctly. I believe it's like the first or second tutorial we did. Here it is, life cycle. Let me actually bring up the solution because this is worth looking at. So the way that you study for the exam isn't really to read. It's to do your six assignments because if you do them and you're, they're fresh and you already have them done or review the assignments if you've already done them. And then uh, that's really, it's, it's, a, it's a, an exam about programming really for about creating Android apps with no with no Java, which is actually kind of interesting. So I'm going to import this life cycle as soon as I unzip it. I forgot to unzip it. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Life cycle. So I downloaded the finished project. We went through this tutorial in the first week or so of class. And let's see. It's on the desktop. Life cycle. There we go. 
Let me take a look at the source code here for it. Uncreate, unresume, unstart, unstop, unpause, undestroy, unsaved instant state. So this is the major uh, kind of the architecture of how everything works together. There's also a PDF file and a PowerPoint file that goes along with this for a little bit more textbook reading. I want to say that's actually in here. It is in here. You look at app activity life cycle. There's got to be a few little things. There's not very much in here, though. You're right. Um, no, this is not a good source. That's the tutorial itself. Um, there's some reading in. Uh, if you thumb through this stuff, there's one PDF file that actually has some reading in it on the life cycle stuff. Otherwise, Google it. Go to Apple. Not, ooh, geez. Go to android.developer.com. I have Apple this weekend. <laughs> iOS is this weekend. Uh, all right. Today is Android. All right. Um, you can probably find supplemental reading on the concept of the develop of uh, the oh geez about the app life cycle. So I'm still talking about life cycle. On that note, any questions on number four? Lots of parts to that question. Kind of an interesting question. Number five, you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate. It's kind of a love hate thing. It's on the concept of Content providers. So I try to pick like the common, like the biggest areas. So content providers. Uh, let's see. In the question, you could actually talk about databases if you wanted to. Um, anything that is available on the phone, as a like the contact contact list, the SMS, the telephone. You know, the dialing features, um, shared resources, content providers. Remember, we used Intents to get it, a couple of them, the contact list, actually the address book. We added a, a name into the address book, and we used it from a, an app. Uh, so the question is about using content providers in an app. One, two, three, four questions, four subparts of this one. It's not too bad. But uh, content providers are how we're going to share information between different apps and different parts of apps and stuff. And persistent data and data that belongs to other apps like the telephone services or text messaging and stuff like that. If you go back to the text message stuff, that uses a content provider with an intent. Um, the database stuff, but not really. I didn't ask you any database questions. I probably could add one on databases, but I think, I don't know, I thought five was okay, actually. So that's uh, the fifth of the short answer variety. So we got one on the basic structures of the programs, two is on the intent filters and intents, then we got the whole GUI part, number three, then we got the development, excuse me, the activity life cycle, number four, and number five is on content providers. So pick one of those five, excuse me, three of the five areas, make sure you're okay with it. Like you know what intents are, or you know what content providers are, how they are used. How are you going to know that? Just go through some of the older tutorials, go through your class notes, go through some of the stuff that you've done in projects. It's not, um, you don't have to write any code, you don't have to do any, all you have to do is the basic concepts, the methods to make these things work. You can read about it online, that's a, that's a good thing, or find a book, actually that book that we did those apps from was, was okay. There's no uh, no reading material in that book either. It's all tutorials. So, um, in terms of uh, reading, if you went to the app uh, android.developer.com, <laughs> can probably pull out here. Let's see. I think is it developer? Oh, android.com. Here we go. So if I come out here and I search on intents and uh, intent filters. Here I got some stuff. I got intent filter, intents and intent filters. Actually, I like that second one better here. This is really good kind of stuff to get the concepts down. Because whatever you study for this will help you in the multiple choice, which I'm going to go over next. So there's lots of definite uh, areas of overlap. Here you're just going to have to, in these questions, you're just going to have to write more. It's like not selecting a multiple choice. It's actually writing. 
And uh, it, depends, it doesn't really matter what you remember about, let's say, intent objects as an example. It doesn't really matter what you remember about it as long as you can say something intelligent to recall, to respond to the question. And intelligent in, uh, might be something different for everybody in terms of what, how is you explain it. And uh, I can read most people's writing. And I uh, can't read brains, so I, do, I don't read minds, so I can't interpret what you're going to say. So the clearer that you write something, the easier it is for me to grade it. But I'm generally fairly lenient when it comes to grading the essay parts of the, the stuff. But this is a great, a great way of finding information. Just take those topic areas I gave you and just go through the developer android.com. This is better information you're going to get on Wikipedia. Wikipedia's got really bad information on it. I don't think this is working anymore. There we go. I think it went to sleep. Oh, there it goes. Now it's back. See, Before, I don't think it was working. Questions on the essay part of it? Yes? Do you have to get some pointers written on the paper, or do you just have to like completely close book? Like, ah, very know? good question. Closed book, closed notes, closed internet, closed neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Open mind. <laughs> Regurgitate on paper. <laughs> but no, closed everything. It's easier that way. Uh, you will not have to just bring a pen or a uh, pencil. No paper. I give you the paper to write on. Because I've had people take... And here's another thing, too. I had this happen in the engineering management class. Uh, not in uh, the summer term, over the summer term. I got the answer sheets back, and it, like there was four of them total. They all got zero points on it, by the way. But the handwriting was the same for like question number two on all the papers, four different papers. And then question number one had the same handwriting and practically the same words for everybody. It's like they, they took, I don't know how they did it because Joel was in here or Sarah Lynn was in here, I was in here. But they shuffled the papers around. You know, like when you're not looking the paper. And one guy wrote the answer for everybody, for four people one of the answers. And another guy wrote an answer for four people. Don't share it. It's not a group activity. <laughs> so if the handwriting matches, there's a red flag right there. I think the problem is they all turned it in together. So I'm looking at this thing going, and then there was different color ink. One was blue ink, and then we had black ink on there. And I'm like, blue ink, blue ink, blue ink, blue ink. Black ink, black ink, black ink. <laughs> What did, what did I say on the radio station? Crooks are, crooks are stupid. <laughs> Cheaters are stupid. At least, okay, my board of advice, make sure the handwriting looks different and it's all in the same color ink. And don't turn them all in one after the other. <laughs> Anyone caught doing that is going to get zero points on their exam. You can't do it anyway because we're really watching out now. Before we were watching, but I can't believe that happened. I was in the room the whole time. I don't know how, you guys, you know, it's paper, it's loose paper. So that's the problem with loose paper, which is why you can't bring any loose paper in with you. If you give me paper that I didn't give you, you don't get any points either. Because people will put stuff on paper, bring it with them. <laughs> no bringing of anything with you. No cell phones or anything like that or electronic devices during the exam either. And then most people, well, I can't write. This is your opportunity to practice your handwriting. It's handwritten. You know, you know what? Actually, after two hours of writing with your hands, it won't, it's not going to be that long. Maybe an hour. It's only three questions. Shorter part of the exam is the writing part. Then you'll walk away going, wow, I should do this more often. You know, your hand will cramp up a little bit. You'll, you'll feel like you got to work out. <laughs> That's what people in the old days used to feel like. When they took notes and stuff, they wrote by hand on paper. <laughs> Yes. Regarding, regarding the concept of content provider, yes. so, uh, we can write our own example or specify There's a question you'll have to answer on the topic. If you type in content provider, content provider, we have a content provider basics. You'll read through and you'll say, oh, you know, this is offered there. It, you're not quizzed on what's going to be offered on which, which device. We have the concept of a URI. We got the concept of a, I don't know, this is for databases, but 
Retrieving data from providers, requesting data. It's a very general question. And if you were given the opportunity to give an example, come up with an example. So see if you can come up with, a, while you're doing this, it, actually sometimes it helps anyway. I gave you examples of everything. So if you think about examples of things like what are content providers, the contact list, um, you know, the, the, the SMS stuff, and a kind of a, an example idea how they work. How do you make one? How do you make an instance of one? What do you do with it? Kind of thing. You don't actually have to do it, and you don't have to have all the details correct. You can have holes in it. But it's the general concepts that you want to be familiar with. Same thing for intents and intent filters. Like, you know, did you know that you actually have to put those in the manifest? You know? You do, <laughs> actually. And do you, have to put anything, do you have to put anything in the manifest for content providers? Oy vey. Huh? You have to access, yes, you have to give a permission in the manifest to access them. So it's the big picture. If you've done a con if you've used a content provider before, you would hopefully remember that you had to do permissions for it. Permissions to access the address book, permissions to do this, to use SQL or a database. Permission to use the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what about intents? You gotta register the intent the intent filters. You gotta tell the app that this activity is allowed to run. And which activity is gonna run first? And then that intent goes from the first activity to the second activity and then back to the first one. And how do you pass put data and get data from the intent? You know, how do you how do, where's that little bundle of data that passes back and forth? Um, that's kind of the general thing. You don't have to remember everything. It's wide open. The questions are wide open. If you can remember something intelligent to say about it, you'll be in good shape. And you don't have to do all five. You pick three of the five. Most people will probably do the one on the IDE environment. They'll do one on the GUI. That's two. And one more. Life cycle's easy. Three. There you go. There's your three. So you don't have to worry about it. Content providers are intense. So that's the case. <laughs> all right. So let's move on. We have 25 multiple choice questions worth one point each. And then those questions were worth 15 points. So it's 40 points total. Number one. I'm not going to read you the questions, but let me tell you there's a couple of tricks with this. I shouldn't say trick. That's a negative word. Most of the E's and the F's are all of the above or none of the above. So in this question, I'm looking at number one. E is all of the above. F is none of the above. And then you have some questions. So read the whole question, go through all of the options. Because if I were reading this first question, I might stop with number one, A or B or C. And then I go down to the bottom and I go, oh, all of the above. Or maybe it's none of the above. So where students have had problems in the past is they've read the question. They didn't go read all the answers. They didn't go through all the answers because sometimes more than one applies. In this test, only one applies. I took out, I had a couple questions where multiple could apply. Too hard. Only one answer applies, but some of the answers say A and B, B and C, C and A. <laughs> so read all of the answers is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Don't just pick the first one that looks good, because there might be another one in there too. First question is on the Android manifest. What I'm, I'm not giving you the questions. I'm going to give you the subject areas for the questions. Long story short, the second one is also on the Android manifest. You want to be familiar with the Android manifest. <laughs> What's in the manifest? Permissions. Oh, let's see what else is in there. What about all the app stuff? What about all of the... I closed Eclipse. Oh, a mini Eclipse. Hello. Uh, let's see, manifest right here. Let's take a look at the manifest for a second here. Yes? Oh, speaker's not working. How about now? Speaker working? Oh, yeah, speaker's working now. I don't know why it goes to sleep on me. I'm boring it to death. <laughs> Following it, my, 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 even my microphone is bored. <laughs> 
What do we got in here? We got, look at that, we got the version, we got the name of the app, the version name of the app, we got the package information, we got the SDK version, the minimum, the maximum, we got the application. We got all the listed activities. If we had, I see an intent filter in here. Oh, we do have an intent in this one. Uh, we have, uh, <coughs> here's one that's called life cycle main activity. You know, we actually have to put one intent filter in to run this one, to run the main activity. If we put another one in, we register the other one. All goes in the opening and closing um, activity tag. I am not going to be asking you questions about the tags, nor am I going to be asking you questions about the format of this document. You should know it's an XML. That's a no-brainer. But really, what are what are the contents of it? Well, we have permissions. We have application-specific data. The name of the you know even the icon for this app is in here. <laughs> what is a manifest control? You have two questions on the same topic. They're two different areas of the manifest. So what is in, what is involved with that? All right, number three. Unless we have questions about the manifest. See, now is also a good opportunity to ask questions. Do you have questions? Nobody's got questions. They're all interested in the next question. Okay, so the first two are on manifest. Number three is a app activity, uh, life cycle activity question. That's why if you know that for the other question, you're going to get this one no problem. This one's pretty easy, actually. So you want to be familiar with the app life cycle. <laughs> On resume, on in, on create, all that stuff. Number four. Well, number four is kind of on a topic I'm going to cover today, which is on the services, service and threads. It's a thread service question. We actually saw threads with. Um, the failed part of what didn't work last in the last part of the restaurant app or something. No, no, it wasn't the restaurant app. It was the other part. Last week or the week before. It was last week. Um, it was running something in the background to ping a server or something. The HTTP request from the, that didn't work. There was a background thread that ran as a service. So I'm going to show you threads and services today as well. This is where the le where the question comes from. It's our last lecture. So we haven't actually gotten to that question yet. Well, we have actually, but we haven't really covered it very much. Uh, number five. This thing keeps going to sleep. Um, number five is about the main activity and the on create method. The main activity. What does the main activity do? What does the onCreate method normally do? It's an easy question. If you've never seen, actually I shouldn't say it, if you've written your own apps, it is easy. If you haven't, it's kind of, a lot of people miss this question. Kind of hard. I don't know, what can you do? You can set the context view. You can work with the saved instance state. You could, oh, make some instances of objects or something. It's a pretty useful little file, pretty useful little method. <laughs> Used for all sorts of different things. Number six. That's another manifest question. Well, there's a lot of manifest questions on here. Number six is also on manifest. So we got manifest going on with number six. Wow, number seven, or do we have questions on manifest? That's the only thing I can really tell you is it's on the manifest. It's on a different part, totally different. All these questions are very different, actually, these manifest questions. Number seven is on application components. So what do we get with application components? We get a lot of stuff. What do we have? Activities, services. Broadcast receivers, broadcast providers. Generally, you know, this section we didn't really look at too much broadcast stuff. We did only one that did the put up a notification message. And then the notification came up when text messages came in. If you remember way back a long time ago. The problem with this class is it's 16 weeks long and I can't remember what happened in September. So uh number eight. Uh 
Number eight's got a typo. Hold on a second, let me fix number eight. <coughs> the word content said context. <laughs> so the question is about content providers. <laughs> But I misspelled content. <laughs> this thing keeps turning off. Uh, so, okay, so number six was on application components. Actually, excuse me, seven was on application components. Eight is on content providers. Nine is on the UI elements and XML part of it. It's uh, not a technical question. Remember the views and the view groups? Review that. <laughs> view components, view groups. There's an entire lecture. Actually, this one had, I went through this lecture. It had a hierarchy of the view groups inside of view groups and views. It's um, not a bad one to look at. It is, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. <sighs> Oh, well, now the internet's running at the speed of light. Uh, it might be under views. Let's see. Supplement. Maybe it's under tutorials. Widgets. Layouts. It's around the layouts, the widgets. <coughs> you guys remember this lecture? Do I need to find it? It had a hierarchy. And it had the views in it. It may have been the same lecture as the layouts. And there are a couple of slides further down. There was a everybody. Everything's a view, by the way. And they're all subviews of other views. And we have view groups that are groupings of views. Like example, radio buttons, checkbox buttons. Those are inside of a view group. You can create your own view groups. Um, that's what the lecture was about. Take a look at that concept. There's also I should have given you an event. That would have been interesting. You know, okay, so I'm going to add I'm going to add a question here. I got two questions. What was the other one I was talking about? Um, database. database. You know, I'm going to add two more questions. Number 6 and number 7. I didn't ask you anything about events. So I'll put a question in there on events. This is for your optional. Oh, short answer. Short answer. Yeah, I'm thinking about more short answer ideas here. I, I left out invent events completely. Because what I could possibly do if you wanted to, I could make the short answer a larger portion. No? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to add a question on databases. And I'm going to add a question on events. Because events are kind of interesting. You know how you do the action button listeners and stuff? You know, like there's three or four different ways of doing them. So listeners, those are events. Listeners uh, for buttons, for clicks, for touches, for all sorts of different things. And one on databases. So if you find yourself, like those are your stronger areas. And the database is just going to be using MySQLite. And it'll be something related to the database stuff that we did in the tutorials. That way, you might find that that question might be easier than a couple of the other ones, and it gives you more options. But I was looking over here going events. I left out events. Bummer. Nothing on custom components. I'm not going to go that deep. And nothing on multi-thread, because we're just going to cover it today, so I'm not going to go that deep either. All right. There's a database tutorial. I'm going to get back. So I was on... Number nine, I did number nine. It's on the view groups and the views. Number ten, <laughs> it's, on, it's on events. <laughs> the word input events is on there. So number ten is a question on events. Wow, number eleven. Do we need do we need any more information on ten? We're good. Number 11 is on um, intent objects. 
I don't know why this thing keeps turning off. Intent objects is uh, number number eleven. Number twelve. I think it might be low on batteries because it just went off again. Uh, the batteries are probably low. Number eleven intent objects. Okay, number twelve. Huh. It's events, but it's not action listeners. Another typo, man. For the most part, on the questions, one of the options, one or two of the options are glaringly correct. The other ones are extremely wrong. So really, you only have to decide between two. I was looking at this other page, and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of obvious. The obvious question will jump off of the page. So the multiple choice, the multiple choice, are, are, are much easier, I think, because you have multiple guests. If you've worked in this environment, you're going to answer the question just fine. And number 13 is on data storage. Data storage. Um, yeah, files, databases, preferences. I'm looking to see if I have one particular on the topic area of interest. Threads. Oh, there's no test quest. There's no testing questions. No uh, JUnit questions. No Android tests. I left it out on purpose. Um, nothing's jumping out at me, uh, so we'll just leave that one alone. It's not on in any particular. It's more of a. It's more of an Android environment data question versus um, a programming question or a database question. It's kind of obvious actually when you start looking at the answers. When you so look at the options, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Probably should fix that. Uh, number 14 is in the, uh, and let me read you right from the question, Android security architecture. What do we get with the security? Oh, we get the manifest. <laughs> Pretty much so. But it's not a manifest question. It's a security architecture question. You don't have to know anything about the layered architecture, by the way. If you remember in the beginning of the class, I showed you the Delvic kernel. Um, lecture one or two and the layered approach and all the APIs and stuff. You know, I didn't test you on that. I didn't test you on Java either. So. His course was not a Java programming course. All right, so uh, number 15, remember that lecture where we rotated the phone around and we had those sensors? We had the ability to put the phone in landscape. Or, actually, at one point, we ran up a tutorial that had a database on it, and the, all the stuff showed up on the side like that. And we had another tutorial we did right after that where we were... If you had the real device, you could move it around and go portrait mode, landscape mode. That's what this question's about. Sensors on the phone. Huh? Accelerometer. But it's not on a particular one. It's on the concept. Those things, those sensors, are sort of like content providers. We ask what position it's in, then we translate it. Or we put different layouts in for different positions. If you go through the notes on the rotation, I think it was called rotation. Uh, layouts, 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 intents, events, widgets, rotation, rotation tutorial. 
goes through uh, saving data. Oh, there's your data now. Saving data, bundle class, retrieving data, life cycle. I mean, this is the wrong one. Well, this is AP rotation, yeah. It saves data in between the. It saves, it puts into a bundle the data so that, because the, um, the class file loads and unloads on the change of orientation. If you remember that concept? Um, sensing things about the phone, getting activities. Read through, the, there's actually, there's the example there. The question is from this lecture. <laughs> all of the questions come from the lectures or the tutorials, by the way. That's where the, all the stuff's coming from. And they're very obvious questions. They're not convoluted stuff. If you did the tutorial, you'll answer the question no problem, because you'll know what I'm talking about, hopefully. And if you don't, you can logically guess, actually, from these answers. <laughs> Questions about uh, that <laughs> orientation. Um, okay, so um, what do we have here? Uh-oh. We have a view question. And a widget question. This is question number 16, yeah. So it's really two questions. The other one was view and view group. This is, I would call, view and widget kind of component question. You don't have to memorize all the different components, like radio groups and check boxes and stuff like that. You just have to answer a multiple choice question about that concepts, about the widget concepts, and about the view concepts. There are two different questions on the same topic area, which is actually kind of interesting. Number 17. Number 17 is on using the internet. Guys, remember the web view. You guys, remember how to use a web view. Got to give the manifest some permissions about using the internet. You can send and receive through HTTP. It's a general question. Not too complicated, actually. I know I'm not projecting because this thing keeps going off. All right, so number 17 is another. Oh, no, number 17. I'm looking at number, excuse me, 18. I'm like, 17 is the internet. 18 is. It's a UI question. But it's more along the lines of the um, Android directory system and the Android development environment UI question. It's an extremely easy question. If I say anything else, you're probably going to get it. <laughs> Has a, yeah, stop with that one. <clears throat> ah, number 19. Number 19. <laughs> B19. No, <it> stopped. <laughs> Bingo. Huh? <laughs> I pressed B19. Uh, okay, let me save this for real stuff. Uh, number 19 is on strings. It's going to say B21, B20. Bingo. You guys know Bingo? Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know sometimes with this crowd. Bingo. B19. 19. 19's on strings. Number 20. Number 20 is on DDMS. DDMS is actually in the sentence. DDMS. DDMS. If this is the first time you've heard of it, take a look at it. <laughs> Get familiar. Get familiar with what's in the DDM app. Oh, geez, it lasts for two seconds. What's familiar with what's inside of it, what you can do with it. I'm looking here. I got emulator controller. I got system information. There's a little log cat out there. Remember the log? Yeah, we got a little log cat out there. File explorer. No, nah, I didn't touch the heap or the threads. Actually, if we... Took this a little further after today's lecture. You can actually, well, look at this finished solution. You can look at, see the threads running. But um, you can actually look at multiple processes running simultaneously. 
heat memory, stuff like that. But that's the DDMS. All right. Uh, number 21. Well, okay, so number 21. Number 21 is an Android programming environment question. That's about all I can say. Android programming environment question. Generic question. Theory question. And number 22 is actually along the same lines. So 21 and 22 are theory questions on Android development environment, programming environment question. They're sort of um, out of one, lectures number one and two. They're easy questions, actually. They're two simple questions. That was 21 and 22. This isn't working, so I'm going to pull it off my neck. Uh, 20, 23. 23 is a layout question. Android layout question. And it's actually fairly easy. Actually, all these questions are pretty easy. Um, number 24. I got two left, 24 and 25. 24 is an action oriented question. Like a button click, on click listener, on item selected listener, action, action related question. <laughs> action listener <laughs> related question. Take a look at those. See how they're formatted, stuff like that. See what, see what, see what's inside of them. Is there some sort of on click, or on selection, or on select? Something inside of the methods that are part of it. <coughs> Listeners, what does a listener do? I mean, you have to kind of dissect it down in terms of the concept. And number twenty-five is on an alert dialog. Alert dialog. Alert dialog. I'm sorry? No. <coughs> Alert dialogue. We did one, but not for a very long time. It was like in the first week of class. In fact, I think there's one here that says Alert dialogue on it. Let's just see. Oh, uh, let's see. Alert dialogue is a little box that comes up on the screen. I'm sorry? Localization? Oh, localization is the tutorial? Okay, so it's in the localization tutorial. Where is the localization tutorial? Oh, here it is. There's an alert dialog in there. There's actually one earlier as well, but I don't remember which one it was. It just sends up a little message. Actually, Tic Tac Toe had an alert dialog in it. You win. O wins. Yeah, it's a little dialog little dialogue window that comes up. It's a multiple choice question on the concept of that alert dialogue. That's the 25th question. Their final answer. <laughs> questions about the questions. We're not done yet. Don't leave. You can't, we haven't even done attendance yet, so don't worry about it. We're, we're, gonna, we, we're still going to do stuff after this. So do we have questions before I end the recording of the final exam review? Do we have questions about the final exam? Yeah, I'm going to add two more questions, one on databases and the other one on events. You still only have to answer three. I'm just going to give you two more options because I'm thinking people might want those options. I don't know. They're important concepts. I didn't leave them out. I did leave them out. Yeah. Now, if you've been attending the class and you've been listening and you've been following along with the tutorials and you did your homework assignments, and let me just check the due date on those homework assignments actually right now. The 16th, which is Monday, the day of the exam, you do the assignments, you're going to have a good shot of getting a really good grade on this actually. And if you think about it, we actually covered a lot. 
So, and none, none of the questions are on Java, so you can't blame it on your lack of Java skill or anything like that. None of the questions are um, on the Android uh, kernel either. This was not an Android embedded systems class either. This was an Android application development class. So it's all on the application development concepts. So we don't have any more questions? If we do, at the end of the class, you can approach me with questions if you'd like after you've thought about them. I still have one more lecture. So I'm going to stop this recording.